welcome back let's discuss another basic signal operation that is performed on the independent variable that is referred as time scaling operation so the third and final basic operation that we should study here is time scaling operation time scaling operation now if we have our sequence x of n now i want to obtain a sequence from this something like say x of 2m or say something like x of 3m or x of 4m or in general any x of a m or can i obtain them from this in or i can also do something like this x of n by 2 can i obtain these sequences x of n by 3 so on or x of n by 4 but in general, if you say k is less than one, means it's an integer which is less than one. So you can say n by k in general. Can you do an operation like this? So what are you doing in these operations? What are you doing? If you are able to perform these operations, what are you doing? You are scaling the time. You are scaling the independent variable, which is time here. You are scaling that time variable here. That's why this operation will occur at time scaling operation. That means replacing n by in general kn refers as a time scaling operation so replacing n by kn means simply time scaling operation means simply time scaling operation where k can be greater than one or k can be less than one and we shall see what's the meaning of k greater than one and k less than one now to illustrate this let me take a simple example let's suppose x of m is simply let me suppose one one two two three and three let me suppose now this is my n equal to zero point n equal to zero point let me take this very simple example all right let me compute uh, x of 2m from this x of 2m now to compute this let me name this signal as y of m so x of 2m is named as y of m now let's compute this sequence all right so I can plot this also. I can plot my given signal also. So I can do the plotting of this. So my value of the sequence at n equal to zero is zero. Sorry, one. The value of the sequence at n equal to one is one. And for negative term, the values are zero. Let me draw these first. So that I value at n equal to two at n equal to three. Are both equal to two. So this is one, this is one, this is the value of two, this is the value of three. Similar the values of the sequence at n equal to four and n equal to five. Okay, so this is my sequence. This is my x of n. Now let's well, compute the, the sequence x of two n. Now uh, for simplicity, I name it this as uh, x of two n. All right. So what's x of two n? So to compute the values of this x of n, I will substitute the values of n. So first put n equal to zero. So this is same as y of zero. Now from this, y of zero means n equal to zero. So this is x of zero. Now x of zero is one. Similarly, y of n, when n is equal to one, that's equal to y of n. Now if you put one, n equal to one here, this will be x of two simply. So x of two is, this is one, two. So x of two is two. All right. Similarly, if you put n equal to two, so this is y of two, and y of two is x of two multiplied by two is four. So uh, x of four is three. Similarly, y of n, when n is equal to 4, that is same as y of 4. Now, y of 4 is x of 2 multiplied by 4 is 8. So this is x of 8. Now, x of 8 is not given. That means this is simply 0. And this is my x of 5. OK, so this is this is 0, and so on. So you can say y of 5, y of 6, and so on are all zero. So these for sample points are zero. Similarly, y for negative values of time means when y is minus 
n is minus one, when n is minus two, and so on are all zeros because I I don't have a sample value of x of n when n is negative. So the values, so I can plot the sequence x of n. Let me do it here. So my sequence is y of n is the same as x of x of two n. X of two n. Now value of the sequence when n is equal to zero is one. So this is the sequence. Similarly, the value of the sequence when n is equal to one is two. So this is two. This is zero. This is one. And similarly, the value of the sequence when n is equal to two is three. So this is the value of the signal when n is equal to two. When n is equal to, sorry, I haven't substituted for n equal to. So y, y, y of n and n is equal to c, is simply y of c, y of c, x of 6, that you can check from here. Put n equal to 3, this will be x of 6. And x of 6 is not, again, not given here. So you can say it's equal to 0. So you can say x of y of 3, uh, y of 4, uh, are 0. So this is our m, and these values are also equal to 0. Right, okay. Now let's compare x of n with x of 2n, or simply y of n. If you compare this, I have six non-zero samples in x of n. One, two, three, four, five, six. When you replace it n by 2n, you have only three samples here, you can check. So you have actually got only half of the number of samples that you have in x of n. So this, in other words, means this is some kind of a down sampling operation. This means is simple, this is some kind of a down sampling operation of signal. Means you are changing the sampling rate by half. See, in X of n, how many samples we have? We have six samples. In X of 2n, we have only half of the number of samples that we have in X of n. So this is some kind of a down sampling operation of X of n. Means we have only half of the samples that we have in X of n. Now, uh, let's see what is x of n by 2. Now, let's study what is x of n by 2. All right. Now, let's. So, if you let me go back to this. So, this is some kind of a down sampling operation. Means you have less number of samples that you had in the original sequence. Now, let's see what is x of n by 2. And let for simplification, let me call this sequence as y of, sorry, z of n this time. So let me call this sequence as here. All right. So let's do this. Let's perform this operation. So to obtain the values of z of n, start substituting the values of n. So z of n when n is equal to zero is same as uh, z of zero. Z of zero means put n equal to zero. So this is x of zero. X of zero is one given in this sequence. So z of put n equal to 1 now, so this is z of 1, z of 1 is x of 1 by 2. Now, do you have the value of 1 by 2, x of 1 by 2 here? If we don't have a value of x of 1 by 2, we don't know that. So if we don't know, we can, let's put that value equal to 0 for simplicity. We don't know the value, but let's put it equal to 0. So z of n, when n is equal to 2, is same as z of which is put n equal to 2 here, you will get x of 2 by 2, that's equal to x of 1. x of 1 is again equal to 1. Similarly, put n equal to 3, you will get z of 3. z of 3 is simply x of 3 by 2. So put n equal to 3 here, you will get x of 3 by 2, that's equal to 0. Why x of 3 by 2 is not given to us? Let's put it equal to 0. So z of n when n is equal to 4. So this is simply z of 4. z of 4 means x of 4 by 2. 4 by 2 is 2. x of 2 is 2. You can check it from the original sequence. z of n when n is equal to 5 is same as z of 5. Now z of 5 means x of 5 by 2. Again, I don't have the value of x of 5, x of 5 by 2. So let me put it equal to 0. I don't know the value, but it's for simplicity, let's use the value equal to zero. So n is equal to 
pi over this will be z of sorry six z of six z of six is simply six sorry x of six by two six by two is three simply three so x of three is two similarly z of n when n is equal to uh, seven so this will be z of seven z of seven is same as x of seven by two x of seven by two again not you let me take the value equal to be zero similarly z of n when n is equal to eight this is z of eight eight z of eight is same as x of eight by two eight by two is four so this is equal to what is x of four x of four is x of 4 is 3 x of 4 is 3 so now x of 4 is 3 here all right similarly z of n when n is equal to 9 that is same as z of 9 so this will be x of 9 by 2 9 by 2 again is not given let me take the value equal to be 0 so z of n and then n is equal to 10 this is same as z of 10 z of 10 is same as 10 by 5 10 by 2 is 5 so x of 5 x of 5 is where you can check now if you say z of 11 you obtain this put n equal to 11 z of 12 and so on these values are zero similarly value of z when n is negative I meaning z of minus 1 z of minus and so on these values are also equal to zero so my sequence my z sequence is something like this so my z sequence is something like this okay let me write the same sequence here let me write the sequence here so my this is my x sequence my z sequence is my z of something like this one zero one Two, z, sorry, so not two. This is zero. Two, zero, two, three, zero, three, zero. Right. Okay. And this is my n equal to zero point. So this is my sequence. All right. Let me draw the sequence first. So this is my sequence z of n, which is same as x of n by two. So this is my sequence x of n by 2. Value of the sequence at n equal to 0 is 1. Value of the sequence at n equal to 1 is 0. Value of the sequence at n equal to 2 is 1. Value of the sequence at n equal to 3 is 0. Value of the sequence at n equal to 4 is 2. This is the value at n equal to 4. Value of the sequence at n equal to 5 is 0. Value of the sequence at n equal to 6 is 2. Now, value of the sequence when n is 7 is 0. Value of the sequence when n is 8 is 3. Value of the sequence when n is how much? 9 is 0. Value of the sequence when n is 10 is 3 and so on rest of the samples are zero from minus one from minus two and minus will be something are zero so if we again compare the sequence with x of n and x of n by two how many samples do i have in x of n i have one two three four five six samples so i have six samples now in z of n how many samples do I have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So I have doubled the number of samples that I have in X of N. Although some of the samples in between samples are zero, although the sum of some of these samples are zero. But I have more number of samples now in between samples um, that I had in X of N. So this is some kind of an upsampling operation when you are increasing the sampling the number of samples are simply the sampling rate of the sequence. That's why this operation also referred as upsampling operation. So referred as upsampling operation. 
for this is the for of up sampling operation now how do you obtain the values of these in between values? how do you how which operation do you perform how do we in this open okay, this we perform a mathematical operation that's called interpolation this is we obtain these values you know, by using a mathematical operation that's called interpolation we shall learn about this interpolation when we're discussing the reconstruction from the sampling 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 version of the scene how do we reconstruct when we can step once we perform we can expect an analog signal from this discrete time signal we shall learn what is meant by interpolation there so interpolation gives us what should be this value what should be the value at n equal to zero interpolation will answer that question now in short i let me repeat it i had only six samples here now i have 12 samples here so this is some kind of an up sampling operation i have more number of samples so this is some kind of an up sampling operation so what are you doing in x of n by 2 and x of n what are we doing in these operations we are changing the sampling rate so that's why these operations are also called um, time scaling operation in time domain is also called a multi rate signal processing sorry let me try this this is also referred as multi rate signal processing rate signal processing And this is multi rate signal processing meaning you are now processing the signal at multi multiple sample rates that's why this is called multi rate signal processing now time scaling what it does simply it changes the rate at which the signal is sampled so we say time scaling operation simply changes the rate at which the signal is sampled we say this is called the multi rate signal processing now changing the sampling rate of the signal is employed very this is a very important operation in speech processing applications this is very very important operation for speech processing applications speech processing this is very important for the the speech processing application now for example you might have seen if you have a recorded video a recorded audio or something you can change it to some other rate for example you are processing in the for example if you are storing the this audio you can have it in mp3 form or mp4 form what that that's simply the changing the rate of the signal means on dvd you store at this at one rate on this magnetic tape you store that at another rate that's that's what market speech processing is all about and this is employed with employed in speech processing applications okay now before i finish uh, this uh, lecture let me uh, uh, talk more about the three operations that we discussed that we performed on this independent variable that is the time variable here that is the time variable now the operations that we performed on this was holding our time time reflection operation our time reverse operation so the first operation was holding our time reversal this is also referred as time reversal operation second operation that we discussed here was mm, this time shifting operation and third operation that we discussed is time scaling operation all these operations are performed on the independent variable that's n here now what are the implications of these operations in frequency domain that's very very important topic of fourier transform this is very very important topic for fourier transform analysis of signals if you want to change the if you change the characteristics of a signal in time domain what will be the implications of this in the frequency domain this is very very important for frequency domain analysis of signals you should learn in the unit 2 of our course okay let me stop here all right